Hey, how's it going? Today I'm gonna to flatten out this slab of wood to turn into a countertop. I'm gonna do it with hand planes and hand tools and palm sander, stuff like that. So come on and check it out. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do with this is I'm going to get the faces as flat as possible. Right now this wood is very rough sawn. I probably have a bunch of little slivers just from running my hands over it, but I'm gonna take a hand plane to it. Later I'm gonna take a sander to it as well. Try to get it as cleaned up as possible and then finish it with a wipe on polyurethane. I'm gonna get this down on my bench. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take a straight edge or this straight ruler here and I'm gonna put it onto my piece and what, the, what I'm going to do is going to use this to determine where the high spots are. So whenever I kind of put this down on there, wherever it kind of sticks on and pivots off of, you kind of know you have a bit of a high spot. So for example, right now, this is kind of uh, catching over here a little bit, and it's really kind of catching here, whereas in the middle, it's, it's not catching. If I move it here, then it's all of a sudden different, and we have a high spot in the middle compared to these sides. So it kind of looks like it's it's quite high towards this corner. And then in this way, it's, yeah, there's a high spot here, high spot here. Again, this is kind of a high spot. I'm gonna get my hand plane set up, and then I'm gonna start to work on flattening this out. It's really important in this process to have a nice sharp blade in your hand plane and not just to sharpen at the beginning of the process, but to be sharpening throughout. It's just gonna make life a whole lot easier. The piece of wood that I'm working with has a couple knots in it that are pretty sizable and pretty hard, and it's just a matter of making sure your blade's nice and sharp throughout. There was a lot of hand planing in this part of the project, and I'm not gonna lie, it took a long time. It was a lot of work. I'm just giving a really condensed version here. It doesn't always translate well to camera to just show, you know, half an hour, an hour of just hand planing, but there's a lot of material to remove. I'm using my number six hand plane because you really want to take everything down in a uniform manner. You don't want to have any low spots or high spots and a longer plane helps with this. When I do this, I'm going to show you kind of what I mean with this longer plane. So just listen for the sounds when I'm planing. You almost hear that there, that was a good one. Here's listen again. It's maybe hard to hear, but you can see as well. Maybe you can see this. Here is getting smooth. Here it's smooth. Here it's still rough. That's because this is a low spot. You can kind of see this whole line across here where that's just low. So the plane's hitting over here and it's because it's so long, the plane can kind of rest on these two high spots and the middle is missed. Whereas with this one, Actually, let's see if this is even true. This one catches actually way more in the middle here because the plane kind of digs down and up. So that's why you use a longer plane for these longer sections. This might seem counterintuitive because if you use the shorter plane, you would get everything smooth faster. The only problem would be that you'd maintain those high spots and low spots because the plane just rides through them and you don't want to do that. When there's an area that's, let's say this part's high and this part's high, this plane is long enough that the blade actually won't touch in the middle because it's going to be registering off these two high points. Whereas when you have this small plane, it can't register off this high point and this high point and it kind of just rides through and you can kind of keep that low point there because you're not registering off and taking material off just those high points. You want to work just all the way across the board taking all the high points down and so you get everything down to the lowest point and everything's flat all the way across. This is an area that the plane has touched and has uh, taken off that rough outer layer. This is an area that ha the plane hasn't touched yet. Now, your initial reaction might be to say, okay, well, I gotta get some sandpaper or I gotta get a, a smaller plane and try to get that area. But what this tells us is this area is lower than all the rest. So rather than trying to hit this area because it's the worst right now, we actually have to bring all this area down until everything comes down to this level. And you might remember uh, this actually went all the way across and, and I've been taking off this high spot. And so we've been kind of working our way across. Uh, so eventually if I take enough from here, uh, we'll get all the way down to that level. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what we're doing here. So you kind of start with the high side and you can see I'm just continuing to take passes, working my way across. And then you're slowly going to start to see kind of the, from the edges 
in this small spot disappear. And once again, just to try to communicate just how much hand planing was done, I'm just showing you some more of it. Again, it doesn't always translate that well into the video, but it just uh, is something you really uh, can't rush. It just takes as long as it takes, and it was actually a pretty fun part of the process. Uh, and at the end, I was able to get quite a large pile of plane shavings uh, that I'll have to get rid of somewhere. During this process, not only am I trying to get everything flat, I'm also trying to get any twist out of the board. So I'm using two parallel pieces of wood, or actually one's a square. I sight along those and those show me if one side of the board or one corner of the board is higher than the other. So here you can see that far left corner is sticking up a little bit. It shows me that that part of the piece of wood is high and I need to bring that down. So I can target that high part of the board and then I can just kind of I work it at that, getting getting that down, and then I can come back with my winding sticks, as some people call them, and I can just check to make sure that it's it's perfectly flat without twist. Once I was happy with the top, I started to cut the sides to rough length before turning to work on the bottom. Because I want the bottom to be parallel to the top, what I'm doing is I'm measuring the thickness that I want for the whole piece, and then I'm referencing off the front face and making a line at that thickness, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to work the entire back of the piece down to that line. So you can kind of see here where that line is on these edge pieces, and this is why I cut the end pieces. And so you'll see it's a bit higher on the one side than the other. And now again, it's just a matter of taking the hand planes and working down to those lines. Now, because I have lines that I'm working to, I'm just kind of angling the plane and taking off from the sides, working down to those lines. But then again, just spending a lot of time removing a lot of material with these hand planes at a pretty deep setting. And then just continuing that until the whole bottom is now flat and then also parallel to the top face. Once the top and bottom were finished, I got ready to make everything the final dimensions that I wanted. I marked a line across the live edge and then using a square, I marked some marks at equal distance from that line. I flipped the piece around and then I connected those marks into a line on the other side. And this way the back edge of the counter and the front edge will be parallel to each other. I got my cutting guide on there and then just made a cut all the way across and uh, it just took a little bit of convincing at the very end to get this piece to fall off but eventually it did and then it was a matter of squaring off the sides and cutting those to length again i forgot to use my camera for the second one so i just did a reenactment here and then again once it was in the final shape i wanted i got to work on the live edge just chopping off the bark I wonder if I should have done this or not, but it was pretty loose and I was worried it was going to fall off if I didn't do this. So this way it ensures that it's not going to fall off. I just kind of chipped away at it with some chisels and gouges and then sanded it down and uh, getting it ready for final finish later on. Once that was done, I started sanding the face of the thing. And, and again, this is just one little clip here, but a lot of just time spent with the palm sander. And then once I had done this quite a bit, I took some of the sawd sawdust out of this palm sander, mixed it with some wood glue, and take, took that mixture and just mixed it into a lot of the different crevices and different gaps in the wood. And there were quite a few just different voids in this wood that I needed to do this for. And so it was just a matter of mixing it in there, letting it dry, and then coming back with palm sander. Once again, for quite a long time, more than I'm showing right here. I finished the sanding with a block sander and a finer grid of sandpaper. And then once that was done and everything was finished the degree I wanted to, I hit it with some wipe on polyurethane. And you can see here how this just kind of brings a color pop to the wood. It was uh, a little bit more amber than I was expecting, especially when the polyurethane was wet and freshly applied. Uh, but eventually it dried to a, a bit of a lighter color that I did quite enjoy. You can see here as well some of the interesting patterns in the wood and, and just the different figure that was in some places. And again, yeah, just finished that off. Uh, worked on the live edge as well with the white bomb polyurethane. And basically just wait for it to dry, add another coat, wait for it to dry, add another coat. And after a while you end up with the final product. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. This is hopefully going to be the top of a coffee bar and so keep tuned to the channel, kind of see the progress there. Um, but yeah, this is what we ended up with. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, take care.